Okay, and um, welcome to this week's lab. So um, this week, we will talk about how we can create an VPC. And we will get familiar with different networking services, so those networking components. We will learn how we can create an VPC, uh, the subnets, and also how we can define the road tables, uh, and also internet gateways. And once we have defined our own VPC, and we are trying to deploy two EC2 instances, so one in the public subnet and one in the private subnet. So and we can see the difference among those um, the, among those instances that are defined in those two subnets. So first, uh, make sure that we are on the AWS console. Um, let's create our VPC. So in addition to the VPC, we are use the PUTTY party, and also we are use WinSCP so party, and also another one is called. Okay, so those are both free, and also they work uh, very and very well on Windows system. Um, so here, let's first go to VPC. So type VPC, and by default, uh, we should have one VPC that is running. Okay, so that is our default VPC. So let's try to create a new one. So let's create a new VPC. And this one, let's call it Lab3 um, VPC. And for this IPv4 CIDR block, and let's use 0.0.0.0 slash uh, 16 so that we will fix the first 16 byte and that give us another 16 byte of those IP addresses so it's very simple to create an VPC so let's create a VPC and the VPC is a free service okay so now that has been created um, and now here you can see we have two um, VPCs uh, so this one is our new one that we just created. And let's go to the actions. So let's edit the host names. So we want to enable the host names so that we can access the instances in a VPC by using their DNS host name. So let's save that change. So now we have a VPC. So let's create two subnets in those VPCs. So let's get go subnets and those are default subnets that already been created in that default VPC uh, so let's create a new subnet create two subnets so let's choose the lab3 VPC and our first one will be used for the public public subnet and um, the CIDR block let's see 10.0.0.0/24 and let's create our second one. So this one we call it private. And for this one, and I'm just copy the value here, but I need to change this one uh, as one one dot. Okay. All right. So those here I have created two subnets. And let's create a subnet. So now two subnets has been created. And next, let's create an internet gateway. So internet gateway allow you to connect your VPC to the internet, public internet. So here we already have one that is the default one. So let's create a new one. And let's call it lab3 internet gateway. Okay, and create that internet gateway. And once we have that on uh, lab three, sorry, a uh, lab, um, it should be lab three. And now let's attach this one on uh, to our lab three VPC. Okay, so attach that internet gateway. Okay, so now this internet gateway has been attached to the VPC we just created. So now we're going to define the route tables. So route table configure how you want 
uh, direct the, the traffic within your VPC. So first, let's create a route table for the public subnet. So public route table, and that will be for the lab three VPC. And let's create that route table. Uh, for that route table, we can see we already have one route, one route that is within the VPC. You can connect the local um, uh, instance. And let's edit that route and let's add a new one. Let's see, this one we want also give the access to the Internet Gateway. So we choose Internet Gateway. And now you can see that the one that we created in the previous step is there. So let's, let's choose that one. So by doing this, we allow that access to the internet. And now let's save the change. So that is the public uh, route table. And we associate this one to the public subnet. So here we see again public route table to the public subnet and we save it. Okay, and now let's go back and let's create a private route table. So subnet. So let's say create a route table. Here I call it private route table. And a VPC will be the lab three VPC. And I hit create. All right. So now you can see by default, it already allows the traffic within uh, our VPC. So that's good. So we don't need to change anything for the routes. But we want to associate this route table with our private subnet. So here we associate that one to the private subnet. And we save that association. Okay, okay. so that's all we need uh, for the uh, VPC part. So we have our one VPC. Within this VPC, we have two subnets, public and private. And for the public uh, subnets, in the route table, we allow the traffic to the Internet Gateway. For the private, we didn't allow that traffic. And we also have the Internet Gateway set, so that can allow VPC to communicate to the Internet. Uh, we can also define the ACL. Okay, uh, but here uh, we can just use the default one. So that basically allow all the traffic. Okay. So next, we are going to launch our EC2 instance. So you can refer this part to our previous lab. So here, let's see, go to EC2. And uh, let's launch uh, two instances. So here you can see, here I have my, pri uh, my previous instances. So let's launch the first one. Uh, so here we're going to launch two instances with the exactly the same settings. The only difference is that one instance is in the private subnet and another instance is in the public subnet. Okay, so by doing so, you will see the difference that how the subnet or how the VPC can, can control the access. So we, um, so that here as an experiment, so we put, we put uh, just launch two exactly the same instances, so all the same security group, the same key pairs, etc. Uh, the only difference is that one in the public subnet and also another one is in the private subnet. Okay, so let's launch uh, an Amazon Linux instance and we choose the T2 macro. And here for the network, let's choose um, Lab3 VPC. So here let's first launch a public. So we put this one in the public subnet. And let's enable the auto assign public IP and keep everything as the same. And at the bottom, so here we still want to launch a, a very simple website. So we copy the user code. 
here. Okay, so this is what we did in the lab, the, in the previous lab. And we add the storage, that is the same, the tag, that's the same. Uh, security group, so let's create a new one. So let's call it lab3 uh, web instances. So this one which will allow the uh, SSH and uh, HTTP access. Okay, so again, we, we make sure that we choose exactly the same. Uh, so for the SSH, we choose anywhere. And the second one, let's choose HTTP. And this is again anywhere. All right, so we create a new security group for this instance and review and launch. Okay, so everything looks right. Okay, and let's click launch. So here, let's say we want to create a new key value pair. So let's call it lab3 EC2. Okay, so we create a new key pair and we download that one and we save it. And now we launch this instance. So we click launch instance. Okay, so after a few minutes, uh, the public instance or the instance in the public uh, subnet uh, will be ready. So this one is the one that in the public subnet. Okay, you can see that is in a public subnet. And now let's launch our second instance. So we keep the same uh, settings. So choose this same one and also again VPC, Lab3. However, we choose the private. Okay, uh, let's also enable the public IP. See that well, that work or not. But the only difference here is that we should we look we put that this instance in the private in, uh, subnet. Uh, again, we gave it the same user code uh, user data. Okay, and the next storage will be the same tag. So here, let's say just make sure we are using the same ones. We choose the exactly the same. A security group so that is lab3 web instance that we just defined that allow ssh and also http and the next let's also choose an existing so that it, let's use uh, lab3 ec2 so that's one uh, key pair that we just uh, created and downloaded for the first instance so let's acknowledge that and the launch our second instance. And now let's view that instance. And we can see the first one is already running. Okay, so this one on that in a public subnet, it is already running. And for the second one, it is in a private subnet. Okay, so it is still pending. So let's wait for a few minutes. Okay, so while we are waiting uh, for those two instances, so let's first convert the downloaded key value pair into the format that we can use uh, PUTTY. So let's bring the PUTTY key generator and let's load the key that we just downloaded. Okay, so that is a PM file. So let's open it. Okay, and let's save that one as a private key. So let's call it lab3-ec2 and save it. All right, so now we just save uh, that into a private key format that PUTTY can recognize or party can recognize. Um, let's say, okay. So it looks like my first instance that in the public subnet is now available. So now I'm going to copy the public DNS and I paste that public DNS and I visit. Okay, so now it is working. So here you can see we can access uh, this instance just as, we did, just as we did in the previous lab. Okay, so that's cool.
And now let's see if we can do that one for the instance in the uh, private subnet. Okay, so now the instance in the private subnet is also available. So let's copy this one and also go to our browser and paste. So again, HTTP and it will not work. Okay, so it will not work because it is in the private subnet. And for private subnet, we didn't connect to the internet gateway. So um, you cannot access the instance in a private network. Okay, so now you might, you might wonder that how can we access in a private network? So for example, that in a public network or subnet, I can have the front end website. And in the private subnet, I can have our database so that uh, users, our clients can access on the front end website, but they cannot access the back end uh, database. But we also want the website or the instance in a public sub subnet is able to access uh, our database or the instance in the private subnet. So let's see, can we do that? So first, uh, we have to uh, pass the keys to our public instance, because if we want to access uh, um, the private uh, subnet uh, the instance, so for example, if we want to use SSH, we also need the key. And also we are using the same key. So here, uh, let's go to the uh, WinSCP. And here I'm going to access my private instance or the instance in the private subnet. So that is my private, uh, sorry, public subnet. So instance in the public subnet. Okay, and let's copy that. So first I need to pass the key. So and uh, the username is ec 2 dash user and here let's advance and in the ss edge so let's bring the key and okay and log in and yes all right so now on the right side this is a public instance and on the left side 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 this is my uh, local computer so i Let's go to my desktop, uh, not my desktop. It should be my download folder. And so I uh, find out my download folder and I just need to copy this one to this, uh, the PM file, okay, to the remote server instance, which is in the public subnet. That's it. And now, Let's go to um, PUTTY or party uh, where let's SSH the uh, public subnet. So that is EC2 user at this public DNS of the public subnet. And here let's bring the keys again for party. We should use the PPK. And here you can see the, the alert. I say yes. All right. So now this is um, the public uh, instance or the instance in a public subnet. And I type ls. And I can see this is uh, the public key that I transferred and loaded to from my local computer. Okay, so now I can see my uh, private key. And now we are using this instance. This is instance is right now this public instance. And we are using this one to SSH the instance in the private subnet. So that is acceptable. That is, uh, that should work because they are in the same uh, VPC. Okay, so that should work. So first, let's Type chmod. 
and we want to change uh, so uh, the mode of the our uh, case that lab three dash ec two dot pm. So this is really for security purposes. And now let's SSH with this Linux with this uh, public instance so that the SSH is a pretty easy so that is SSH and dash i and we provide the key so that is lab 3 ec 2pem remember that we are using the same key for private and also for the uh, public ec2 instance so that is ec2 user at i okay so here we provide the private ip address for the instance in the private subnet so like copy it um, not this one and the paste so the private ip address is 1.1 and yes all right, so now you can see that uh, initially I was uh, using a puppy to SSH, SSH the public instance. Okay, and now on that public instance, uh, SSH to this private instance. Okay, and that worked. So if I type ls, I cannot see the, uh, the key. Okay, because now I SSH to the private instance through this public instance. So if I type XI, EXIT, now I just came back to the public instance. So now I can see the keys. Okay, so that is for this lab. Uh, so um, we have done a lot in this lab. So we created a VPC. Within that VPC, we created two subnets one for public and one for private the only difference is that for the public subnet we added a route allowed that subnet to access to the internet gateway okay that is really the secret that makes that subnet as public and once we have those two subnets we launched two ec2 instances with exactly the same settings the same security group the same key value key pairs, etc. But one into the public subnet and also one into the private subnet. And it turns out that only the instance in the public subnet is access it's accessible. So we can access that one by using the browser. Uh, for the private one, we have to SSH to the public instance first. And on the public instance, we can SSH to the private instance by using the private IP address.